Now four variable came up. So as you got four variable, definitely we can expect uh, sixteen combinations. Okay, Kornhoff map can be extended to four variables. So top cells are adjacent to bottom cells. Left cells are adjacent to right edge cells. So these are nothing but top cells, and these are nothing but the bottom cells. And all these top cells are adjacent to, adjacent to these bottom cells. And these are nothing but the left cells, and these are nothing but the right cells. All these left cells are adjacent to the right cells. Okay, so as you have four variables, definitely you will be getting sixteen combinations or else sixteen mintums, as you can see here. And uh, we are following the gray code sequence. So M zero, M one, M two, M three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. They have represented all those min terms with variables in this way on the right hand side. Okay, so W X should be on one side and Y Z should be on the other side. Okay, one one cell represents a min term of four literals. So if I'm going with only one cell, then it is going to represent four literals in a four variable map. For example. If I'm only grouping this M2, then this particular cell is going to represent four literals. That is W, X, Y, and Z. Okay, a rectangle of two adjacent cells represents a product term of three literals. So if I'm grouping, if I'm grouping two adjacent cells, it means if I'm grouping uh, two cells, then I'm going to get only three literals. A, rectang a rectangle of four cells. It represents a product term of two literals. So if I'm going with uh, a grouping of four cells, then I'm going to get only two literals. A rectangle of eight cells represents a product term of one literal. So if I'm grouping totally eight cells, then it becomes or we'll get the resultant expression as a one literal. A rectangle of sixteen cells produces a function that is equal to logic one. Okay. So if you are grouping all these sixteen cells. Then the resultant expression would be one. Now, simplify the following Boolean function, uh, and uh, these are all the min terms of this particular function. So first, we have to put all these min terms on the K map. So I have plotted all those min terms on the K map, and then you have to form the blocks. Okay, and uh, uh, always we have to go with maximum sized grouping. Okay, so if you can see here. these are adjacent cells okay and uh, we can go with a group size of 8 so i have formed a group whose size is 8 okay and then these cells are adjacent cells therefore i am making one more block of four cells okay and these two are adjacent therefore i am making one more block of two cells okay and the resultant expression would be this one okay for example if you if you consider this particular block of size 8 okay now here the value of a and b are continuously changing from 0 to 1 so we should we have to ignore this variables or literals a and b and if you consider the other variables c and d that is column variables okay you can observe here the value of c is constant but it is holding 0 so it is represented as bar okay and if you consider the next block whose size is 4 okay here the value of a is changing from 0 to 1 but whereas the value of b is constant okay but it is holding 0 so that is what is represented as b bar and uh, the value of c is changing from 0 to 1 and whereas the value of d is constant which is nothing but 0 therefore it is represented as d bar okay and the last block that we have is this now here the value of a and b are constant but a is holding 0 and b is holding 1 so that is why a bar b and whereas the value of c is changing from 0 to 1 therefore it should be ignored and the value of d is constant which is nothing but 1 therefore it is written without complement that is d so this is what the resultant expression that we have got for this particular function need to define uh, some more new terms here that is implicant prime implicant and essential prime implicants okay so before before going to this we can also extend these k maps for five variable as well as for 
six variable in the same fashion that we have gone with uh, that we have seen with the uh, four variable map okay now let us see what are these uh, uh, what about these terminologies that is implicant prime implicant as well as essential prime implicant now implicant any product term in the sum of products form a block of ones in the k map okay as we know that all the product terms or min terms are represented with ones therefore any product term in the sop expression will be considered as a implicant okay now prime implicant product term that cannot be further reduced okay so it means a maximum sized implicant is nothing but a prime implicant so uh, blocks of ones that cannot be further increased okay as i told you that if we cannot able to reduce it further then that particular implicant is called as a prime implicant essential prime implicant prime implicant that covers a one one main term that is not covered by any other prime implicant okay so if there is any prime implicant that is not covered by some other prime implicants then that pi is called as essential prime implicant let us see this with examples okay so i have plotted this particular function on the right hand side and i have took this particular k map randomly okay now i have gone with groupings of maximum size so here you can see the maximum size is 4 and here it is 4 again and uh, again 4 4 so here in this particular map you can see that essential prime implicants are bd and b bar d bar okay which is nothing but this is bd okay these are called as prime essential prime implicants because this group is not covered by any other prime implicant so that is why it is called as a essential prime implicant okay and if you consider this particular map here the prime implicants are cd b bar c ad and then ab bar okay so what is a prime implicant just now we have seen that product term that cannot further that cannot be further reduced so the maximum sized grouping uh min terms are called as a prime implicants here you can see that cd cd is nothing but uh this term okay and here the maximum size would be 4 we cannot reduce or we cannot increase the grouping size to uh, to 8 okay and uh, b bar c which is nothing but this and then ad which is nothing but this group whose size is again 4 we cannot increase it to 8 and then ab bar which is nothing but this whose size is, is again 4 okay let us take one more example consider the function f of a comma b comma c comma d whose k map is shown at the right side okay so this is what uh, uh, the k map where i have plotted all the min terms okay now and i have uh, i have gone with the groupings and i have uh, got some blocks here okay and uh, i have got the expressions so a bar b bar is not a prime implicant because it is contained in b bar okay so a bar b bar which is nothing but this okay a bar b bar is not a prime implicant why because we can we can increase the size of this block okay from 4 to 8 why because as i told you that the left side the left side of the map is adjacent to the right side of the map or or, or else the left the left side cells are adjacent to the right side cells okay so a bar b bar is not a prime implicant acd is not a prime implicant because it is contained in ad okay so here acd which is nothing but this red dashed grouping this is also not a prime implicant why because we can increase this particular grouping or block into a size of 4 b bar ad and a bar c d bar are prime implicants so which is nothing but b bar whose size is 8 as i told you that it cannot further be increased and then ad his uh, this size is 4 and then a bar c d bar and uh, here the size is a uh, maximum is 2 therefore these implicants are called as essential sorry these implicants are called as prime implicants now what is essential prime implicant if a min term of function f is included in only one prime implicant p then p is an essential prime implicant of f okay as i already told you that 
if a prime implicant is not covered in any of the prime implicants or implicants then we can call that particular pi as essential prime implicant and essential prime implicant must appear in all possible sop expressions of a function to find essential prime implicants generate all prime implicants of a function so initially we have to generate all the prime implicants select those prime impl prime implicants that contain at least one one that is not covered by any other prime implicant okay if you can see here okay now here the these are the prime implicants and these prime implicants are not going to be covered in the other prime implicants therefore all these three prime implicants are called as the essential prime implicants in the next session we'll discuss about product of sums as well as sum of product simplifications thank you